DFC here. Grab a seat. Uh, this video is comp it, it'll be a quick yet comprehensive slash conversational because I like to talk video on one of my AR-15s. This one this is one of my two main rigs. So as far as guns go, and you can probably tell about my the few videos I have made up up till now, I like rifles and I like military style rifles and I like AR-15s. So that was basically my first goal as a, as a shooter was to put together the AR-15s that I want. So anyway, what better place to start for a no frills AR-15 than BCM? They have a great reputation. They're uh, very competitively priced, and I, I like them. I just I'm kind of a brand fanboy. But I, I, I'm a fan of good brands, and I rarely, I don't know if I've ever heard a bad thing about BCM. I, I think I've heard, they brag about their QC, because they don't actually make anything, to my knowledge. They, sh they shop it all out, and then get it back, and then QC the hell out of it. I have heard of some QC issues, so, but I, I've never experienced it. I have four of their uppers. Anyway, so I chose BCM. It's a BCM upper and lower. The upper specifically, this is a 14.5 inch button cut chrome lined standard, what they call standard profile barrel. It's not a, it's not, it's a, basically, I can see from the barrel nut here, it's thick and then it sort of tapers down and it, it maintains its whole profile throughout the length of the barrel so it's not a government profile it's a what they call standard profile uh, I went with that just because this was gonna be a light enough rifle as it is I like light rifles I prefer light things uh, my other main rig is a enhanced lightweight profile that's also a barrel hammer forged so I wanted to kinda of go the opposite with this and I wanted to set one up for long range and one for short range. This is short range. On the end of the barrel is, is a, I have to look at my cheat sheet, it's a Comp Mod 1. This is also a BCM product and you when you buy the upper, so I bought the upper from BCM.com whatever it is, www.bravocompanyusa.com they have two websites um, and actually I believe they have a 7% sale on their uppers right now but that's neither here nor there. This is a Comp Mod 1 muzzle device. It's supposed to be a combination of recoil mitigation and flash suppression. It, it, it is kind of A2 like and this rifle is dirty by the way. I just probably had about 400 rounds through it in the last four days. I haven't cleaned it. I'm gonna clean it. I uh, just haven't had a chance. I like the muzzle device. It does uh, mitigate recoil. This is a, this is a 5.56 rifle. Uh, also the barrel is a 5.56 barrel. It's not a 223 Wildy or any of that. It's 556 NATO barrel. Uh, I, I the muzzle device to me is optically pleasing. I, I think it looks good and it does its job. So one of these uppers. So just word of the mistake I made. So word to the wise. If you order them, if you order a 14.5 inch, and you don't want to NFA it you have to pin and weld basically a 1.5 inch muzzle device on the end well I ordered my first one and it might have been this one I forget which one I ordered first and I didn't I wasn't paying attention so I actually had to send it off I sent it off to Rainier Arms in Washington State and they did a great job so it was a week to ship it there a week to ship back and they had it two days so I had it, it was a turnaround was three weeks start to finish I was pretty happy with it and they did a good job great job actually so that's that's the upper and the the muzzle device. Uh, this here, and I'm not sure I like it or not. I haven't had a chance to operate to do some uh, late night tactical operations with it. But this is also a BCM item. It's a kinesthetic angled grip, CAG for short. 
So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I hold. So I'm kind of old school. I'm an old school army guy. And so I'm still sort of trying to decide. I think basically I think I like a stubby better, which I may end up just replacing this with a stubby. Uh, the rail on this is a 13 inch BCM rail. I love their rails. The profile is very thin. I don't know if you can see that, but I can almost get my, my hand around it. So it's very narrow diameter, which I really like. I, I don't like the big thick loaf of bread handrails. And this handrail is super light. And it's key mod. This was before the M-Lock uh, came out, which they have a full suite of M-Lock handguards now. Which if I were buying now, I would get M-Lock, but... Key mod's fine. I don't hang a lot of crap off my rails anyway, and the fact that it looks like row after row of penises, I guess doesn't bother me. Uh, so, that's basically the upper. The lower is also BCM. I bought it as a complete lower, and I bought the upper as a complete upper too. I have built ARs, but I didn't, I didn't want to build these. I'm not particularly skilled. Uh, so this, this is a BCM lower. I forget where I got it. I got one at Rainier Arms. I got one, maybe, I want to say, was it Ground Zero Precision? I don't know. So it's, uh, this has the, this came with the full BCM trigger guard, which is just like the uh, MOE which this is perfect to me. The grip is also BCM, what is it? Mod Zero Grip, so it's fairly vertical. Hope I don't, I hope I don't keep going out of frame here. This is fairly vertical grip. I like it, it's perfect. It's got a storage compartment. It's, I don't know what's in there. Oh, it looks like it's probably batteries for my MRO. So that's another thing with the upper is, and it, this is a, my last thing I did was become a trigger snob. This is a LaRue MBT trigger, so MBT is meticulously built trigger. It is two stage, 2.5 first stage, 2.0 second stage, and they also include a heavier spring, which I have in here. To make it a total of six pounds pull, but I think it's less than that. I don't have a pull gauge. Uh, it's a fantastic trigger. It's. Let's see if I can. So the gun is clear. If you can see it, I'll pull it this way. One thing unique about this is the trigger face is quite wide. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's got a wide trigger face. It's not a thin trigger. And I like that. I actually like the feel of that. I don't know what metric I could use to describe that other than it feels good to me. Good to the point where they just had a sale for $99 and I bought two more for other ARs. So I have the MBT. I'll have it in four rifles. So let's, let's pull it. So here's the first stage. So that's the take up. You can, you can easily feel the wall to the second stage, so we'll do the first stage, and then here's the second stage. And hopefully you can see that. And that's it. And we'll try the reset. Got a very crisp, non-gritty, smooth reset. Boom. Highly recommend the trigger. There's no MIM parts on it. It's all handmade in Texas. LaRue's, uh... The Rue's pretty good stuff. I have problems with some of their stuff, but they're they're pretty good stuff. The next thing, so that's the lower. I don't think I have anything else. Comes with a, a QD plate with the plate with the QD attachment right there, which I like. I use I use a Magpul sling, two point sling on this. I forget which one it is. Back, so the lower, that's the lower. Now back to, so my sighting systems. The main sighting system is a Trigicon MRO on a American Defense QD mount, true co-witness. 
American Defense is another Wisconsin company that cranks out great parts at great prices. Trigicon is a Michigan company, so this is basically a Big Ten build, Big Ten State build. I am also a fanboy of Trigicon, and I am a fanboy of American Defense, although my favorite QD mounts are Bulbro, and my other rifle has Bulbro Quick Detach on it. I love Quick Detach because they're, they're uh, decluttered, other than the lever, they're, they're low profile and they're smooth. I don't take, I don't ever take mine off. I like the looks of them and I like the fact if I had to take it off, they come off. So this is the Trigicon MRO. This is a 2MOA red dot sight. It's got six positions of brightness. Right now I have it on three. I normally use it at three or four. It's a fantastic crisp brown dot. There's no blooming. The, the brightness levels make sense. Uh, when I did sight it in, I, the, the clicks, the windage and elevation clicks weren't the most crisp. They're there, but when you're at a range and you have hearing protection on and you have people shooting and it wasn't, it wasn't super ideal. So I had to kind of get eyes on it and I think it's half MOA clicks on this. But I highly recommend this. Fantastic, fantastic red dot. I have Vortex, and I love Vortex. That's another Wisconsin company. But I, I don't like their red dots at all. And I finally, when I stepped up to a Trigicon, I just I liked them. And I like the looks of I like I prefer the looks of of uh, EOTech. But I don't like their reticle, and I don't like the fact that their batteries last four minutes with the, when the thing is on. I like the battery of of Aimpoint, the battery life of Aimpoint, and I like the slimness and sleekness of Aimpoint, but I want a bigger, I want a bigger uh, sight picture. So this is actually the perfect compromise. It's like my dream optic right here. Plus, it's, you can get it for under 400 bucks. No mount, of course, but that's a whole other deal. The backup iron sights are Lewis Machine and Tool. I think my last video I said Lewis Machine and Tactical. It's it's LMT Lewis Machine and Tool. And those guys, those guys are professionals, and they know they overbuild stuff. And this this rear does not have a clutch, so it folds up and down, and it's a canister style. And I have it sighted in at 100 yards. It's got two apertures. So there's the peep aperture. I don't know if you can see that or not. I might have to get up and show you. So there's the peep aperture, and then here's the non-peep. But this is a canister style, and so if you can see, I have it at 100, and then there's six, six above that. So if I wanted to, to dial this up to make a 200-yard shot, I'd dial this up to 2. At the, so it rotates. This is counterclockwise. So let me uh So let me see. So here it's at one. I'm not sure somebody was messing around with it's probably me. Probably beer related. So that's one. And if you want to, oh, maybe I can set it down. Maybe not. If you want to dial it up, so that's one. You can dial it up to 200, 300, 400, 500 yards. And then back back to the one, but it's actually one full revolution back to 600 yards. And the side actually moves up and down when you rotate the canister. It's a very sure-handed system. It feels good. The detents are very crisp, very purposeful. Just a fantastic light uh, backup iron sight. It folds down. I, I think it looks great. It works great. And the front is the AK, HK style, excuse me. 
And my only beef with this is the post is big and square. It's an A2 style post. But that's good because there's a million aftermarket finer finer posts with tritium, with brown balls, with a little crosshair, everything. So I actually have a couple on order I'm going to try and replace that with. And this actually has a clutch so it won't fold until you push in the side. So then they fold down. Highly recommend those sights. They're expensive. I think they were 260 some. But buy once, cry once. It's what I wanted on this rifle. I didn't want to compromise. I don't want to wait. I didn't want to waste money on a Magpul that I didn't like. That I would eventually buy these anyway. So I just bought them. I think that's about it. Oh, the charging handle. This is a Raptor. Probably the my favorite charging handle out there. That's one thing BCM, I, I'm not a big fan of their charging handles, even the Ambi one. So this is an Ambi, everybody knows what the Raptor is. This is the older, I think now they're made by Radiant Arms. This was older, I think this is AXTS. Let's see. Yeah, so this is uh, AXTS Raptor. It's the same, the, the Radiant is exactly the same from what I could tell. So... The buttstock is a uh, Battle Link Minimalist. Everybody's seen these. These are about as popular as the Raptor charging handles, and for a good reason. It's a fantastic stock, it's super light, the action's nice, simple. Uh, and have I mentioned it's super light? It's like five ounces. It's ridiculous how light that is. And I like the look of it. And I think that's it. Let me look at my list. Uh, I think that's it. Anyway, this rifle probably has a couple thousand rounds through it. I have this sighted in at 50 and I have the backup sighted in at 100. I love it. It's light. I don't know the weight. I have the weight somewhere, but it's I don't I think it's under 7 with a loaded mag in it. Um, maybe I'll do some flybys. Everybody likes flybys. <laughs> So there's the BCM Cop Mod 1. There's the pin and weld mark. They did a great job. There, let me back up and do this. These aren't the best flybys. The camera's kind of zoomed in. Maybe I'll back up. But I, I can't complain. There's better rifles out there, obviously. But I just think BCM is just a no-nonsense, heavily mil-spec. I'm a big fan of mil-spec because I was in the military. And I've seen... I've seen what millions of soldiers can do to rifles. And so, boy, these 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 flybys are just a fail. Let me let me get this. Maybe I'll break this up. Let me zoom that back. Mill spec is mill spec for a reason. Yeah, I always hear people say, "Well, our stuff's better than mill spec." That may be true, but mill spec survives millions of army men and women throwing their rifles around. I was in boot camp, Fort McClellan, Alabama, and we beat the hell out of those rifles. And those rifles, and they were M16A1s, it was right when they were phasing in the M16A2s, they beat, we beat the hell out of those rifles. And half the time we had the red, the red flash suppressor things on there when we were shooting blanks. So we're shooting blanks through these things. This gun I had, it, it had thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds through it. And it still worked. And it was a Colt M16. I don't know if I can, this might be a fail. Yeah, that's going to be a fail. I'm just going to make people nauseous. So let me set that down. 
Let me get the camera set up again. Hey guys. Mill spec is mill spec for a reason. I went to boot camp Fort, Fort McClellan, Alabama. We beat the hell out of those Colt M16A1s. And like I said, when I got it, it had the hell beaten out of it. But we kept it clean and we kept it lubed and that thing worked flawlessly. And I qualified middle, what was it, sharpshooter? And I'm not a particularly good shot, I, I'm just okay. So I'm in between. We only had a couple of dudes qualify expert. That was that was back when, I think it was, to get expert you had to hit 38 or more out of 40. And we had the crazy Ivans that would pop up. So 50 yards out to 300 yards, I think, if that's right. Using just the iron sights. That rifle shot awesome, and I still, to this day, want an M16A1 or A2. When I went to my unit, I actually was issued an A2, and I, I like the A2. That was the three-round burst. I, I like that, too. That was fine. So, but all these mil-spec things that people improve, unless they've been, had a million soldiers throw the thing around and put millions of rounds through it, etc., etc., and still work, then mil spec is good in my opinion. Mil spec is a min minimum of what I want. Um, so I hope I got that out. I'm not talking smack about people that improve over mil spec, but mil like I said, I just, mil spec is mil spec for a reason. It's had millions of millions of rounds through it, mishandled, all kinds of weather conditions, and it still works. That's mil spec. So. That's my thoughts on this gun. Um, I think I'm running out of battery too. I'm going to have to cut this up and get it uh, uploaded to VidMe because VidMe takes about 18 days to upload a 20 minute vid. Uh, and I'm yet to be verified and I'm not happy about it. So DFC, signing out. Hey guys, DFC here again. I forgot to mention the bolt carrier group. I don't know how. That's the along with the barrel. That's the heart and soul of the rifle. So this is a BCM bolt carrier group. Some of the highlights. I have my cheat sheet here. It's Kyle Carpenter 158 steel, which I prefer. Uh, it's nothing fancy. It's it's a mil spec bolt carrier. It's a mag mag particle tested, high pressure tested. Chrome line key and carrier. Uh, I think I have three of these in various rifles. This one's pretty dirty. Oh yeah, that's the signature bolt. They are 15, they are 10 bolt. So it's real dirty. But uh, fantastic bolt carrier. Again, I don't know who makes these. Maybe American Defense makes them because American Defense makes bolt carriers, bolt carrier and bolts. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's it's flawless. I have probably I have three of these and three different rifles. I probably have five thousand total rounds through all of them, and I've never had a problem. They run great. They uh, that they're just no not. It's a simple throw it in and forget about it. So I'll uh, I'll put this at the end of the video. Uh, I know a lot of you have BCM bolts, bolt bolt and bolt carrier groups. Um, Nothing more needs to be said, so DFC, signing out.